mountains of Oregon, summer has ended and autumn is now in full swing. With the fall rains comes the arrival of wild mushrooms. There are lots of tasty edible mushrooms, but my personal favorite is the King Bolete, also known as the Porcini. In the past, I have found these elusive mushrooms hiding in the alpine meadows near Mount Jefferson. So on a sunny autumn day, I set out into the high mountain wilderness in search of the King of Mushrooms. My destination was a beautiful area known as Jeff Park, which sits at the base of Mount Jefferson. I decided to take the Whitewater Trail, which is the shortest and easiest hike to Jeff Park. The hike is about 10 miles round trip and has an elevation gain of around 1,800 feet. The first part of the trail goes steadily uphill through old growth conifer forest. It is the steepest portion of the hike and accounts for more than half of the total elevation gain. As I gained in elevation, the trees became smaller and bear grass began to line the path. A trail sign indicated that I had reached the top of the ridge. My destination was the Pacific Crest Trail and then onward to Jeff Park. As I hiked along the ridge line, the trail became somewhat easier. As the trees began to thin, I was greeted by some stunning views. Another bonus is that the plants became more diverse and colorful. These red bushes that I'm sitting in are huckleberry bushes, but unfortunately the huckleberries have come and gone for this season. I continued along the trail, occasionally glimpsing Mount Jefferson through the trees. And then, suddenly, as I came around a bend, there was the mountain in full view. I was nearing Jeff Park, and I started paying close attention to the ground in hopes of seeing mushrooms. No mushrooms yet, but I'm about to get to Jeff Park, and I'm entering the domain of the King Belit, so I gotta keep my eyes peeled. As I came closer to Jeff Park, the trees gave way to meadows full of green grass, wildflowers, colorful plants, and of course, amazing views of Mount Jefferson. The appearance of small mountain streams meant that I had finally arrived to Jeff Park. With Mount Jefferson towering above it, Jeff Park is an epic landscape of expansive meadows, pristine mountain lakes, and stunning views. With so much beauty around me, I almost forgot why I came here in the first place. The King Belit. I got close to the ground and started looking. I looked and I looked some more. I visited all the likely places and yet there was no Belits to be found. I spent almost four hours walking all over Jeff Park and couldn't find a single mushroom. The day was getting late and I finally gave up. But before heading home, I took some time to meditate on the beauty of Jeff Park. Well, it hasn't been a very fruitful day up here at Jeff Park, but I had a good time and that's really what counts. Normally there's quite a few beliefs this time of year, but I'm not sure. I haven't found any today and uh, either they're hiding really well or they're just not quite here yet. I'm thinking that maybe another week or two, maybe another rain, and I think they'll start popping up. So I'm not going to give up. I'm going to come back and I'm going to keep on looking. For my second journey, I decided to ride my bike to Brightonbush Lake and then hike to Jeff Park from the north along the Pacific Crest Trail. This portion of the PCT is also known as the Skyline Trail. From Brightonbush Lake to Jeff Park is approximately 12 miles round trip and much of the hike is relatively easy. Most of the Skyline Trail is above 6,000 feet in elevation and it offers some amazing scenery with sweeping vistas in all directions. It also has plentiful meadows, scenic ponds, and even a few snow fields. After roughly four miles of hiking, you reach Park Ridge, which is the highest point of the trail at 7,000 feet. Park Ridge offers amazing views in all directions, but the view of Mount Jefferson is especially nice. I was starting to get tired, so I decided to turn back instead of hiking down to Jeff Park. In past years, I had found King Belitz around Brightonbush Lake, so I decided to look there instead. I found a few mushrooms along the trail, but unfortunately, no Belitz. This is an Amanita that I just found, and it's a good sign because usually these come up about the same time as the King Belitz. I searched and I searched, but I never found a single King Belitz. Well, it's been another full day and still no King Belitz. I'm thinking that they haven't quite come out yet, so I'm going to try again in about another week. On the way home, I stopped by a waterfall to cool down and refresh myself. Once again, I hadn't found any Belitz, 
but I was still thankful for the beautiful day. They say the third time's the charm, and I was hoping this would be true for my third journey. This time I decided to hike to Jeff Park on the South Brighton Bush Trail. The trail is approximately 13 miles round trip and has an elevation gain of nearly 3,000 feet. Almost the entire hike is uphill, and it can be quite a workout. It's a beautiful hike that starts in old growth forest and climbs its way to high alpine meadows. I immediately noticed an abundance of mushrooms along the trail. There were all kinds of varieties and lots of them. This was a good sign and I was looking forward to reaching the higher elevation where the King Belites live. This is one big Rusula. Roughly halfway to Jeff Park I found my first Belites. They weren't King Belites, but they were choice edibles and I was excited to find them. Finding these Belites was yet another great sign, because they indicated that King Belites might be nearby. I was getting close to Jeff Park and still finding all kinds of mushrooms. The most interesting mushrooms I came across were the red and white Amanitas. This is the famous Amanita muscaria that many mushroom hunters uh, look for. Now this is a high mountain variety so I hear that its uh, magical qualities aren't quite as powerful and, and in fact it's not really recommended that anyone eat these because they'll probably just make you sick. After a long hike I finally made it to Jeff Park and began my search for King Belitz. I can almost smell them. I'm absolutely certain that there's king bleats around here, and I'm going to find them. And finally, my perseverance paid off, and I found my first king bleat. Yay! Here it is, at last, the king bleat. And it's a beautiful one, too. It was my lucky day, and as I continued to search, I found literally hundreds of king bleats hiding among the foliage. They were everywhere. I found bleats of all sizes, but my favorite kind is small and firm. They last the longest and usually taste the best. This is one beautiful bleat. Eventually my backpack was filled to the brim and I headed home to share my bounty. As you can see, I came back with quite a score, and I intended to share them with my friends. After cleaning them off, I sliced them up and put them in a tasty marinade. Next I basted them with olive oil and baked them in the oven until they are slightly crispy. And finally, they became the key ingredient to one of my favorite autumn meals, BLTs, Belit Lettuce and Tomato Sandwiches. Delicious.